Welcome, everyone, and thank you for checking out uh, the Awaken Alive podcast. Uh, this episode is a little bit of a, a different kind of format than what we normally do. Um, on September 6th, we have Steve Maxwell from Maxwell Strength and Conditioning joining the show. And prior to the show, we had asked Steve to answer just a, a few questions for us that we originally had thought about posting uh, as a uh, a blog post, but uh, Steve decided to actually record his responses to the questions, and uh, his responses were so good that we thought that we would use them uh, as sort of a teaser to the full episode that we will be doing with him. Uh, Steve Maxwell, uh, for those who aren't familiar with his work, is um, a excellent strength and conditioning coach. Uh, he travels all over the world uh, teaching seminars um, on uh, jujitsu. Um, kettlebell training, um, and, and one of his big specialties, which he addresses in this interview, uh, is longevity training and um, how to uh, train and eat and live uh, for a lifetime uh, so that you can be optimally fit uh, and avoid a lot of the uh, health issues uh, that plague uh, most of our society. Um, Steve has been uh, all over the globe um, he's on every podcast imaginable. Um, he's been on Joe Rogan's, the Joe Rogan experience multiple times. Uh, he's been on London Real multiple times. Um, he's been on every jujitsu podcast you, you, I mean, you can think of. I mean, the guy is really amazing. Um, I personally, um, have been a fan of, uh, Steve's for, uh, quite some time now, um, I learned about him through the Joe Rogan podcast a couple years ago when he was first on. Um, and then back in October, uh, I was in a serious car accident um, where I was rear-ended from behind uh, on the highway by a guy going nearly full speed who didn't see it, uh, that the highway had stopped. Uh, following the accident, I had some lasting tendonitis in my left shoulder from the seatbelt and some um, lasting knee neck pain from... Uh, the whiplash associated with it and um i had not never tried one of steve's programs prior to that but um i got fed up with sort of the western approach that i had been taking and with no success and i had uh bought his uh corrective and balancing workouts in his encyclopedia of joint mobility um down uh digital programs and just had phenomenal success um and it got me right back up to speed um, and the pain went right away. Uh, so I know firsthand the power of uh, Steve's knowledge and um, some of his programs. Uh, but anyways, um, enjoy the show. We hope that you will uh, subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. Um, all episodes are also available on our website, IamAwakeAndAlive.com. Um, uh, again, the show with Steve is on September 6th. But anyways, uh, without further ado, here is uh, Mr. Steve Maxwell. Thanks. What exactly does that mean? I'm a huge proponent of longevity training. And what I mean by that is exercises that help preserve my, my life and uh, help keep me youthful. Um, the way that plays out... Uh, I avoid exercises that would cause any kind of uh, damage to my, uh, my joints or my muscles. Uh, there's a lot of things I did in my youth that uh, actually di did injure me. Uh, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, you know, some of the kettlebell stuff that I did earlier in life. Uh, that's not sustainable over a lifetime. In my estimation, proper strength training should prevent injuries, not cause them. Training for me isn't like a sport or even a recreation, is what I do to keep myself strong and able to do the type of things I do like to do, like hiking, running, walking, swimming. I like to get on the mat and do jiu-jitsu. These are the things I like to do. They're recreations. So the, the type of longevity training I do helps preserve my youth and vitality and doesn't cause me damage. So many of the systems out there today actually do more harm than good. I see people literally destroying their bodies with these urban gymnastic workouts, the CrossFit workouts. Uh, these things are not sustainable and there's no longevity in these type of, uh, in, in that type of training. So it, it's just say, sane, sage, sensible uh, working out. That's what I call longevity training. Very cool. And 
as people get into their 30s and beyond, how should they adapt their training with all these things in mind? Is there anything they should be doing less or more of? As a person uh, gets into their mid-30s and beyond, they need to start taking great care as to not injuring themselves. Uh, as I said earlier, proper weight training, proper strength training, proper training of any type prevents injuries, doesn't cause it. That's, that's one of the, the, the five points um, uh, that I use to define proper training. Proper training should increase strength and endurance, uh, increase uh, cardiorespiratory health, uh, should increase mobility and flexibility, and uh, make the body more resilient and, and, and uh, you can't injury proof yourself but, but certainly help prevent injuries when we do play our sports and recreations. So as a person gets into their 30s they got to take a hard look at some of the activities that they're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm not an advocate of uh, fast explosive training or plyometrics for anybody in their 30s. Uh, I was never big on that even when I was younger. Uh, Olympic weightlifting, where, where you're exposing your, your body to excessive force, uh, gymnastic stunts and tricks, you know, the, the kipping pull-ups and the bar muscle-ups and things. None of this is sustainable. Much of this can erode joint health and, and cause damage. These are the types of things that people need to avoid as they begin to get older. Uh, e even the really heavy loads in the spine with, let's say, barbell back squats and things. I did all that stuff when I was younger. But I don't believe it has any place in a longevity uh, program. If you're looking to get into your 70s and 80s and still want to be able to move uh, pain-free. Mm. And why is uh, mobility training so important as a component of longevity training? Mobility training uh, really works on the quality of movement patterns. And as a person ages, uh, you can see it all the time. You'll see old folks with their walkers and their canes. Uh, in a lot of countries where I travel, uh, people live fairly long, but they're sitting in wheelchairs being pushed around by their kids, you know? Mm -hmm. To me, uh, that's no good what's, uh, at, at all. Um, I mean, my own genetic heritage, uh, my grandparents, they, they were pretty crippled up uh, before they died. Uh, even my own mom and dad, they 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 have a, a lot of uh, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis and so forth, because they never did their homework with with uh, uh, stretching and mobility work. There are there, all of my exercises uh, have a mobility component. Even my strength training does, my weight training and so forth. I always move through full range with an eye for quality of movement over quantity and or even the amount of weight. It's always about the quality of the movement. But I also have very specific movements that I do that help preserve the joint, that nourish the joint. Joints don't have a direct blood supply. They're nourished directly through movement. Uh, the synovial fluid uh, washes over the joint. This is produced through, through uh, high repetition movement exercises. Takes waste out of the joint, carries nutrients into the joint. So I, I have these light uh, exercises that I'll do every day that helps prefer, uh, preserve joint health and keeps a good range of motion in there. And I also do some uh, static stretching and so forth. Uh, I'm not against static stretching, but mobility and stretching are two completely different things. Right. And what type of mobility work would you recommend for the average desk jockey? I have a whole series of mobility exercises that uh, that I prescribe. Uh, I call it the Max Mobil Mobility System. So that's what I would tell people yeah. to do: do my system. And my system is comprised of many different elements. Uh, some traditional yoga, uh, Qigong, uh, Taoist yoga, uh, the Russian Slavic Health System. Uh, I, I I've adapted. Uh, from many different systems and combined it into my own little system. Uh, sort of like the great Bruce Lee uh, once said, you know, you take that which is useful and discard that which is not. So one of my, one of my skills, one of my talents was always being able to take a lot of different subjects and distill the essence of those subjects. And what I've done is I've taken some of my favorite uh, mobility and movement-based uh, exercise systems 
and I've distilled the best from each one of those and combined it into the Maxwell, Maxwell Mobility System. Great. And I know it can drag on for quite a while, but in terms of diet and dietary rules for eating for longevity, is there anything uh, you could go over in a few words that would uh, contribute to... Yeah, the most important thing is don't eat a lot. Mm -hmm. Eat little. Uh, follow the Okanagan rule. They're some of the longest lived people on, on the planet. Uh, I think the Icarians are number one, but the Okinawans are right behind them. Uh, you'll find that people that live really long eat very little. Uh, the Okinawans use the 80% uh, rule. They, they never eat till they're full. They never uh, eat till they're stuffed. So uh, I refer to this as uh, systematic under-eating. Always leave the table feeling maybe a little hungry. Always feel like you, could, uh, like you want to eat a little bit more. Now, we all have a tendency to overeat now and again. Uh, so if that happens, you just miss the next meal or fast or eat extremely late uh, the next day. Um, I'm a big advocate of having long gaps between meals. I do not believe in this frequent uh, feeding or grazing. I think it's really important to have four to five hours between meals so that you're not overburdening the digestion. And I follow the work of uh, Dr. John Tilden, who was a turn-of-the-century American physician, who used fasting and diet as medicine. He was very much against the, uh, the Western medical model of drug therapy. He believed that the human body is capable of healing itself from anything. And he prescribed a food combining diet where you don't mix a lot of stuff all together in one meal. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll see people with the meat and the potatoes and the rice and the bread and you know, vegetables, and then they'll have like a, a dessert on top of that. Tilden referred to this as crowded nutrition. And I, I've seen other versions, by the way. Tilden isn't the only guy. I, I've read probably 100 books in diet and nutrition. I just liked what Tilden had to say as much as anybody I've ever seen. Uh, he was very simple, very matter-of-fact. Uh, I liked his food combining rules. And since following the basic advice of the Tilden diet, my health is, has been impeccable. I've, I've never felt better. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say everyone should read his classic work, Toxemia Explained. It's free. You can get it off the Soil and Health Library uh, online. There's free PDFs. And most of his work is still there. And uh, this guy really had something important to say. You follow his advice and you won't be sick and you'll feel fantastic. And You'll definitely, uh, you may not actually expand your, your lifespan. I don't think there's anyone that can promise that. But you'll certainly put more quality in the years that you do live. Because it's not just about living to an old age. It's like the quality of those years that really counts. Great. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is just a brief introduction to the topics that we are going to be covering with Steve on uh, September 6th. Uh, we hope that you will subscribe to the show on iTunes. Um, check out the full show that we will be doing with Steve. Um, also, as a reminder, uh, we did just launched an online training portal um, that is just awesome, featuring Mega Mad Fitness. Uh, the online portal has over 10 full uh, unconventional and conventional uh, strength training programs uh, that guide you day to day through your workout routine. Um, we also have over 150 exercise tutorials and a full 29-day uh, program that actually has uh, follow-along workouts uh, videos embedded in them. So you can do them anywhere on your phone, at the gym, at home, um, anywhere. Anyways, uh, check it out. Um, it's only $14.99 a month, um, or you can become a lifetime member, get access to all the programs that are available now, plus all of the programs that are, will be available in the future um, for just $149. Anyways, uh, thanks for checking out this episode, and please, again, please subscribe to the podcast. Thanks.